Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead, where over the last eight years we have been building our dream life here in the country after giving up the big city and corporate America. Today we are going to be working on a project that is kind of timely right now, and that is starting a long-term seed storage bank. Now there's a few reasons that I'm doing this project right now. Uh, one is because we're at the time of year where we're starting to save seeds out of our garden. And this is the perfect time then to separate those seeds into a bunch of different packets and save them for multiple years down the road. The other thing is right now there's some things that are fresh in my mind coming out of or, or still being in gardening season. And that is specifically revolving around some of the tomatoes that I really love to grow. Many of you know, I love tomatoes. I grow a lot of tomatoes every year. I eat a lot of tomatoes every year. It's just a part of this homesteading life that I can't imagine not having. Now, two out of my three favorite varieties of tomatoes are hybrid tomatoes. Hybrid tomatoes grow really, really well. There's a reason that they were produced in the first place. And in the case here, the reason I like the varieties we have is because they put on a very consistent crop from year to year, and they do very little splitting in the heat of the summer, which is very important here in Missouri. The problem with hybrid tomatoes is that you really shouldn't be saving seed from them. You can save the seed from them, and the seeds will grow. They just won't grow the same variety that you save the seed from. So really with hybrid seeds, you need to buy seed every year. Some years that can be difficult. I remember a couple of years ago, there was one of the varieties that I love to grow. I couldn't find anywhere. Everybody was sold out. And that got me kind of going down this road of the project that we're working on today, which is going to be buying seeds in bulk so that we can separate them into multiple years worth of seeds and save them long term. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be not only repackaging some of the seeds that I've purchased, but then also saving some of the seeds out of the garden for long-term storage as well. So let's get started. So the seeds that we are going to be saving today are three different types of tomatoes. We're going to be saving uh, Juliet's, which is my favorite hybrid uh, cherry tomato. We're also going to be saving Jetstar, which is our all-time favorite uh, slicing tomato, another hybrid. And then the last tomato that we're going to be saving seeds from today is the large red cherry. Now the large red cherry is an heirloom tomato, so we can save seeds from this as well. But as long as I was placing an order uh, to get these other ones delivered, I just decided to add these on as well because doesn't cost much more to just add these on as long as you're already paying for shipping. And this has got about 500 seeds in it, which is going to be many years worth of seed for the large red cherry. And then the last thing that we're going to be saving or repackaging seeds from today are the Wisconsin pickling cucumbers that Sarah recently did a video about how to save those seeds from the garden. So if you haven't seen the video where she teaches you how to actually save the seed from the cucumbers, uh, go back and watch that. These seeds have been drying on a plate and now they are ready to be packaged. While we're on the subject of saving seeds, I do want to show you guys our favorite book for learning how to save seeds. Uh, this is a book that we purchased quite a few years ago already on Amazon. I'll make sure there's a link to this but it is just a wealth of knowledge. The book is called Seed to Seed by Suzanne Ashworth, and it has pretty much every type of plant that you can grow, how to save the seed from that specific plant, how far away it needs to be planted from other plants in order to not have cross-pollination. It is just a really in-depth book on how to save all different types of seed, so I highly recommend you pick this up. You don't have to read the whole thing when you get it and memorize everything, but it's a great resource so that when you're out in the garden or you bring something in and want to save seed and aren't quite sure how to do it, you can flip through here and figure it out. So again, I'll make sure there's a link to that in our Amazon shop. Now there aren't a whole lot of supplies that you need for packaging seeds for long-term storage, but the things that you do need are very important. Uh, you're going to need some type of seed pack that can protect the seeds from light and humidity. 
I picked up these uh, Mylar uh, seed packets on Amazon. I was able to get a hundred of them for $10, so 10 cents a piece. I thought that was a very good deal. Uh, so these are a black Mylar, so they will protect them from the light, but they'll also protect them from humidity. The other thing you're going to need are some silica packets. Uh, I was also able to get these on Amazon, a hundred of them for just over $7, so about seven cents a piece. I'll leave a link to those as well. These actually absorb any moisture that might be in the packet uh, from the seeds or from the air, whatever, when you put them inside. So those are the things that you absolutely need. And then the other thing is, for, at least in my case here, I just had some address labels. I just printed on there uh, what was going to be in each packet because these black packets are kind of hard to write on. In hindsight, I probably should have also put the year and how many seeds were in each packet. So I'll probably just go back and write the, that part by hand. Now these seed packets have a zip seal on them and that could be all that you really need. Uh, I am going to heat seal the top of these when we're done as well. Since we already have a heat sealer from our freeze dryer, I'm gonna go ahead and heat seal the top of these and that will give that even a little more protection. When we're all done, we will be storing these in an even bigger package. I'm gonna put like all of the Jet Stars in one Mylar bag, all of the larger cherries in another and so on. And then we'll seal that package as well. And then everything will be kept in the refrigerator. All right, so let's get busy starting to package up our seeds. Uh, I'm gonna start with these cucumber seeds since they're already out here. Now, when thinking about how to package the seeds, what you really wanna do is kinda of think about how many do you think you're actually gonna grow in one season? In our case with cucumbers, I know we're probably never gonna grow more than 10 or 15 plants in a season. So I'm gonna store these 15 seeds in a packet. Uh, that way we can start all 15 if we want to, or we can just start what we need, but I'm not gonna be wasting a bunch by opening a packet with say 50 seeds in it when I only need 10. So there's really not a whole lot to this. I'm going to, again, count out 15 seeds and put them in my packet. Now, the one thing I do wanna say is you do wanna make sure that these seeds are very dry before you put them in a packet. Even though you're putting the silica gel packet in there, um, you still wanna make sure that your seeds are as dry as they can be before you ever put them in. All right, so we've got our 15 seeds in our packet. I'm gonna open these uh, silica gel packets. Now, the one thing I wanted to tell you as well is if you don't wanna go out and buy 100 of these gel packets, um, you can save these from things that you buy in the store. There are many, many things that you buy at the store that come with one of these little packets in, and they never really go bad. Uh, if they've been exposed to the air for a really long time, they may have absorbed a lot of moisture and you can reset them. So if you save these, say every time you buy a pair of shoes, one of these comes in the package or anytime, I mean, there's just a lot of things where these come in, keep them. And then when you need a bunch of them like today, you can actually take these, you can put them in your oven at 200 degrees for about an hour and they will completely dry back out and be as good as new. Um, that way you can just start using them again and they'll absorb moisture once again. So we're gonna put that silica packet in with the seeds. We're gonna seal this up. And then we're gonna put a label on saying Wisconsin Pickling Cucumber. And like I said, I'm also gonna write on here 15 seeds and the year 2024. So I'm gonna get all of these cucumber seeds done, uh, put into packets, packets, and then we'll seal these up. All right, so just like that, we have the next 10 growing seasons of the Wisconsin Pickling Cucumbers put into packages. 
Now, I do want to talk to you about how long these seeds will be viable. If stored correctly, we should be able to get 10 years out of these seeds. Now, after about five years though, you're probably gonna to start to see some decrease in germination. Uh, possibly even before that, if you don't store them correctly. So again, the two main things that are gonna make your seeds no longer viable are exposure to light and exposure to humidity. So that's why we have them in the Mylar bags and why we have the silica packet in there. The other thing that we're gonna do is when we're all done, when we have these inside of yet another container, is we're gonna store these in the refrigerator uh, until we need them. But we'll talk about that a little bit more at the end of the video. So I've got these all done. We're gonna move on to the tomatoes. So thinking about our garden and how many tomatoes we grow, when it comes to the cherry tomatoes, the large red cherry and the Juliette, I know that probably even if this were a situation where we were like needing to survive on these tomatoes or these were the only three tomatoes we had access to, I can't imagine a situation where I would need more than 10 plants of each of these. That's gonna produce a ton of tomatoes because these are both very prolific. And since they're cherry tomatoes, while you, you can use them for canning and things like that, they're mainly used for eating fresh. So I'm gonna put, I think 12 seeds in each packet for these. And then on the Jet Stars, which are a slicing tomato, if this were the only tomato we could grow one year, we would probably want more than that. So this packet has 250 seeds in it. I'm gonna put 25 seeds into each of our packets so that we use these all up and I have 10 years worth of the Jet Stars set aside. We've got all of our seeds put into packs. We have 10 packs of each type of seed, which is awesome. The last thing that we have to do, and I've already kind of started it off camera, is we're going to heat seal all of the packs. So these packs, like I said, they do have a zipper seal on, so you don't absolutely have to do this step, but it does help for long-term storage. So we have this heat sealer that we have for when we use our freeze dryer. And we're gonna use this to seal up these seed packs as well. So basically what it's going to do is it's gonna just kind of melt the top of the package here. And then when we get ready to use these, you'll just rip that off and then you can use the zipper seal part. So all you do for this is you hold it right there where you want it, push this down. And just like that, it melts the two pieces of the Mylar bag together. So I've got just a couple left here to do. And just like that, all of our seed packets are now heat sealed shut. So that means I've now got 10 growing seasons worth of seeds for all of my favorite tomatoes, which is the Juliet, the Large Red Cherry, and the Jet Stars, and for the uh, Wisconsin Pickling Cucumbers that Sarah saved seed from a few weeks ago. Now we've got a lot more seeds that we wanna save out of the garden yet this year. Uh, pepper seeds and, and other things that we're gonna save seed from and we will be storing a lot of them in this way You never know if something should happen in the future where suddenly Seeds are not going to be available from the store and this gives you a lot of added security Knowing that you can have your favorite varieties available whenever you want them so the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to put these into uh, another package uh, and this is just kind of you don't really have to do this you could put these in like a mason jar or something like that but an added step of adding these now to a another mylar bag with an oxygen absorber is going to make their lifespan even that much longer so i've already gotten out four mylar bags these are the harvest right ones that we use with our freeze dryer and four oxygen absorbers it's not 
crucial that you have an oxygen absorber, but it is going to help uh, just keep things fresher even a little bit longer. So we're going to start here with the Wisconsin pickling cucumbers. We're going to just put all of these seed packets in here. And these Mylar bags also have a zipper seal. So I'm not going to heat seal these because we're going to be in and out of these every time we want to get seeds. So I'm just going to zipper seal these. And I'm going to do this for all of the seeds that we have. Now the reason that I'm putting each variety of seed in its own Mylar bag like this is so that uh, if while we're storing them sometime over the next basically 10 years, uh, these little stickers that I put on each packet come off. I'll still know what's inside of each seed packet because each one was inside of its own separate Mylar bag. So here we go. In just a matter of about an hour, I was able to pack, repackage and save seeds for the next 10 growing seasons for some of my favorite varieties. Uh, this is a really great way, whether you're saving seeds from your garden or whether you just want to save some money by buying seeds in bulk, while at the same time having the security of knowing that you have these seeds on hand. This is a really good way to start your own seed bank or seed vault, whatever you wanna call it, and know that you have that security going into the future. We have a lot more seed saving to do yet this year. If you guys wanna see more videos about that, let us know. We'd love to show you how we save seeds from from different things around the homestead. Now, after we're done with this video, I will be putting these seeds into the refrigerator. At this point, you could save these just in a cool location. Um, they're already protected from light, so you don't really need to worry about a dark location, but you could put these in a cool location. A refrigerator will, will make them stay even longer. You could also put them in the freezer if you really wanted to. The only thing that I'll say about the refrigerator or the freezer is if you're going to do that way uh, is that when you get ready to plant them and before you open the packages, you want to leave them out on just the counter or something like that for a day or so before you open the packages. You want to be careful about condensation building up on the packages because again, the most detrimental thing to seeds is going to be light and is going to be moisture specifically moisture. Well, once these seeds come in contact with moisture, even if it's just a really humid environment, they could possibly start to kind of activate. And then when you get ready to plant them in your garden, your germination rate is gonna go down. All right, you guys, I hope this gives you some ideas of how you can store seeds for long-term storage, especially if you're like me and some of the varieties that you really like are hybrids. This is a great way to kind of overcome that downside of growing hybrid varieties. Hey, if you're enjoying videos like this, I hope you'll hit that subscribe button before you leave. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And remember, as always, the absolute best way you can help us is just by sharing our videos. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless.